we know that obviously we have very different um, political systems. So how are British politics different than US politics? Mm, probably the most important one is I, we don't have Donald Trump. <laughs> you can't laugh. <laughs> Uh, oh, you can't so lucky. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so, um, so we don't have a presidential system. Um, we have a prime minister um, who is in charge of a cabinet. Um, so think of your big round table um, with um, 26, 27 people round about it running different departments. And they have a collective responsibility through the prime minister to parliament and the Prime Minister has to come to Parliament and say, I want to do this. And Parliament can say yes or no. And then it would come to us in the House of Lords and we would say, OK, you want to do this, but that's not, that's not very clever. There, there, there are problems um, with what you're looking to do. So why don't you think about this? And we will ask the government to, to think again and we can make changes. So the big difference is President... Um, as opposed to a, a prime minister with a, a with a cabinet, um, the because we don't have a president, our elections are through six hundred and fifty. So a bit like the the House of Representatives, elections with six hundred and fifty um, single constituencies, um, and they then form parliament. And whoever's got the biggest um, the biggest group then gets to choose the prime minister. Um, so that's the the big differences, and the the other one, which is which is actually quite important, but often gets missed, is that our civil servants um, are completely independent. So the civil servants who run government um, for us, I, like in your school, um, the the school support staff, the secretarial staff, the head teacher, odd teacher, all of the, the civil servants. They are independent and stay even when the government changes, whereas in Washington, the, the top tier um, of, of most of your departments um, change each time, which you, you can lose things with that. So we've quite a stable political system sometimes. Okay. Um, one of your focus areas is education. Can you tell us? us um, what some of the your goals are for education in your in your country yeah so so one of the um, so as I was saying I, I didn't I didn't do very well at school and I um, talked my way into a technical college and then um, so I don't have a degree so most of the people in politics have got a degree most of those are political degrees are from political big political universities I, I didn't come that way I came a different way I'm Half of the young people, so when you get to 18, um, I don't know what, what the numbers are in America, but in the UK, half of the young people in the UK go to university, the other half don't. Um, some of those will go on to um, technical qualifications, some of them will go on to further education, um, some of them will go straight into work. And um, so much of uh, the the countries, the government's energy is focused on those that go to university because virtually all of them went to university, um, that the other half are forgotten. So what I would like to see and what I've been campaigning for is more investment, um, more support um, for, for those young people who do not choose to go through a university degree and may go into a technical qualification or may go into work so that you're supporting you're supporting them and their ability and their chances to to learn um, even when they finished um, school um, so that and then the other side is the the younger um, people so I'm um, under the age of five um, if you can support young children um, who may be in poorer backgrounds or in difficult backgrounds or difficult circumstances and you can give them the opportunities um, to to learn to engage to learn social skills to work with each other and you can support that at a very young age then you can give you give people you balance things out and it's not just that the rich can do really well because they've got the money to pay for things and the poor don't, you, you can balance things up. So it's about at the top end of education, at the bottom end, and balancing them up. Opportunity. 
Yeah, it's that's really good um, focus. Like I think everybody should have a great education as well. Yeah. But um, what are the rules and formalities for meeting the Queen of England? Like do you have any experience or anything? Okay, so so I haven't met I am the Queen. I am but the Queen I am I've got it upstairs. The Queen has signed um, my letters patent, which which made me Lord McNichol of, of West Kilbride. Um, so it's upstairs. So why don't I take a photograph of that and send it to you? The, it's got a wax a wax seal that is that size, and and the Queen signed it by hand. So um, I've not met her. I went to her garden party. Um, she had a garden party last year, so we went to that. There were about 2,000 other people there. There was a lot of other people there as well. And um, when um, the House of Lords um, opens up a new parliament, the Queen has to come into the house where I work, and, and she sits in the throne at the end, and I sit on one of the other benches. So... Um, so, so there, there's, there's quite a few formalities I've, I've never had to because I never received any of the other um, honours that, that um, a number of people have in terms of OBE and MBE and CBE and knighthood. I just went straight from nothing to House of Lords. So I missed out all of those stages. Um, so yeah, formalities, I'm, there's quite a few. But if you get a chance, then come over and you can, you can read up on them. Wow. That's cool. Um, so how has the pandemic affected you as a politician and how has it changed your job? Yeah, so I'm, so as a, as a politician, I'm, we are only going in I'm, to the House of Lords physically I'm, two days a week. The rest of the time we're, we're on Zoom I'm, and we're having discussions and we're having debates. How it's affected me is that, that I have become a deputy speaker um, so I I can now um, chair um, some of the the proceedings. Um, so I got um, I've been I'm helping out, and the, the reason that I've been helping out is because I'm most of the the other speakers um, are all over the age of seventy. There is no age limit in the in the House of Lords. There's there's two or three lords that are ninety three years old. And and they are they are so clever. They are phenomenal um, experiences that they have. Um, so because I'm anyone over the age of seventy is not coming into the um, physically going in. I've been I'm going in and doing some um, some work on on that. So, but we have to keep our distance. There's you can't. We have big spaces now that you can't sit. Um, some of it is is just one one way. Um, and, and the other thing is, I've been driving to work as well, um, rather than going on public transport. So that's how it's been affecting. We've still been able to hold the government to account, um, but the, some of the legislation has been um, slipping, um, slipping down. So the government needs to do a lot of work on Brexit, on us leaving Europe, and they haven't been able to do that yet. Okay, um, so... You play the bagpipes, and how did you get started, and how long have you been playing the bagpipes? So, I'm, we're doing this thing I'm in in UK. Every Thursday evening at 8 o'clock, we all go outside, and we all clap I'm, or make a noise. And that's because the health service that, that we have in the UK, I'm we pay for through our taxes. So it's not about individuals being able to afford it and not afford it in Medicare and, and people not being able to get the drugs they need and the treatment they need because they don't have the money. Everyone is treated the same um, in the UK. And, um, and it, it's big, it's a huge organization. And, and many of them are, are, are catching COVID-19 because they are looking after people um, I, w with the disease. So on a Thursday night, we all go out and clap. Um, on Yesterday, I took my bagpipes and went up and down the street playing the bagpipes to say thank you. So they're upstairs. I could go and get them. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> I know the neighbours. <laughs> um, so I started when I was uh, your age. 
Um, actually, I was younger. I was 11 um, when I started. And it was through the Boys Brigade. Um, and I learned to play the chanter, um, which I'm, I did. I've got it next door. The doors are all open, so I'm, or I'd play for you. Um, and then I just learned, played as part of the pipe band, um, and really enjoyed that, and, and then just kept on going kept on going because once you learn an instrument do you play instruments i just started um as one of my electives to play guitar and i'm really enjoying that yeah excellent ada yeah i play viola oh now fantastic so once you learn i'm um, it always i'm um, sticks with you so just um yeah just keep on going make sure you learn I um, learn the basics, but then learn some tunes that make it fun. And then it's just practice. Just keep on practicing. 